I'm Owen. And this is Indigo, our schoolie. She is an international BE200 midsize school bus with a VT365 engine and an Allison 1000 transmission, which has been fantastic everywhere we've needed to go. Yeah, she's a diesel. And she <laughs> runs really, really well. We've heard of like a lot of schoolies like struggling on hills and stuff, and she's like cruises right through them. She just, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So she's 24 feet long, which is the perfect size to fit in pretty much any uh, national park campsite, RV campsite. It's about 25 foot limit for RVs, which is really important for us because we wanted to be able to do everything that a van could do and go yeah. anywhere that we wanted to go. Yeah, and so far it has been perfect every time. We've been able to park at all of the trailheads, even really busy ones that just have normal car spots. We're able to fit right in, so it's, been amazing. it's awesome. Yeah, it's perfect. Starting off with our entryway, we have some shoe storage right up here. Plants for decoration, they are all real, and uh, I decided to do baskets since they're not breakable. Key hook, decorations, candles, dog treats, and all of this does stay during transit. We have Velcroed everything. This is glass and filled with water, and so far, like, the Velcro is super secure. We haven't had anything fall off while we drive, which is awesome. I did build out the dash. Uh, We've had people ask us if we took out all of the underneath. We built on top of it and the answer is we did basically just build on top of it. We took out very little because a lot of the screws are really inaccessible. So just built out of plywood on top, the existing dash. Up here we've got storage, keep our cleaning supplies, grocery bags. And then in the very front we've got our heater, which is how we stay warm. This is the Dickinson uh, Marine propane heater and it does a great freaking job. This is Bonzo. He loves to keep us on our toes and keep us cleaning our nice floor because <laughs> <laughs> he loves to dig and make it He does very love dirty. to dig. You sweet thing. He's a very good boy. He's only 12 weeks old so he is learning the ways of bus life from the beginning and so far he's loving it. Yeah. This is our dinette. Not only does it have uh, storage underneath but it also does pull out. To access the storage, you simply lift up on the front panel and you have a big compartment underneath. We store our extra pillows down here, as well as some uh, music items. Once that's put back down, you can just slide it out and pop your pillows back on. Same thing goes for the other side, but underneath here is our electrical system where the solar panels on the roof come down and charge everything that we need to run our fridge, our water pump, our lights, everything. It's a 270 amp hour lithium iron battery. Uh, we've got an inverter to run our plugs and a Red Arc charge controller and charger underneath that down there. This is our AC breaker panel and back here is our 12 volt fuse box. And then there's a bunch of random little electrical things that you probably don't need to go into, but if you're building a schoolie, have fun. This is a big project in <laughs> such a small area. <laughs> but doable. But doable, definitely. We actually only had about three or four days to finish this electrical box because we had we really wanted to get onto the road. But um, yeah, we just had to put our heads down and cram through it and we did get it done. The most important part of tiny living is making sure that you use the space wisely. So our couch doubles as, well triples as a couch, storage, but it also pulls out to an extra bed. One of the most important things to us when thinking of the build was still being able to host our friends. And this was the easiest way to do that. Moving down the line, we've got the passenger side of our kitchen. We have a full range and oven combo, and underneath a lot of storage for baking items and Tupperwares cutting and boards. cutting boards and all of that. It's pretty fantastic. All uh, that hold. door sometimes works. You don't have to include that. Okay. <laughs> this door works every time, <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> this is our trash and recycling. Recycling in the back. Trash right up here. And this is some art that we found online. 
Another really important thing to us when building out our bus was making sure that we're able to pretty much always just get up and go. And so we wanted to not have to worry about storing th too many things when we um, are driving, which you have to do when you have just like cabinets. But with drawers, I made spaces for each thing. So nothing clinks together or can break. And we're always ready to just hop on the road when we want to. Under here, we store our pot lids. And my favorite part of the bus is our compost. So this is called an herbalive. Ooh, we got some nice mold yeah. in there. But it's a couple part system. Uh, there's worms up top and then it filters through um, the bottom section where the soil goes. And then under there comes the compost liquid and there's a little spout underneath that makes compost tea, which we can use to water all of our plants. So, an easy way for us to still live sustainably. Up top we have our sink. We have this uh, nice faucet that can do the little hose thing in the bobber, which is important to us. Um, and yeah, it's super deep. We're able to store like a lot of dishes in there, which is nice because if we do ever not get the chance to wash our dishes before we have to hit the road, we can pretty much always fit them all in here. This cool collapsible drying rack. Anything that can save space is a must in bus life. And we decided to do open shelving. Um, in a small space, I feel like it can be really easy to feel even smaller the more you close it in. So we wanted it to feel really open, lots of plants, candles, vibes. <laughs> oh yeah, plenty of vibes. Nothing but vibes, actually. This is our pantry refrigerator space. So we have a full-size fridge. Actually, the biggest fridge Owen and I have ever had since living together. <laughs> Awesome freezer. Up here we keep appliances like toasters, blenders, a French press, and toiletries. And this is our pantry. It's my favorite part of the bus. Um, we love to shop zero waste, low waste as much as possible, and so we buy in bulk. So we've wanted to have a lot of space for jars use scrap bamboo floor to make all the dividers just like I did in the kitchen cabinet so nothing clanks together and these little hooks just latch in so when we are going to drive they can't pull out and up here we have spices some protein bars cooking oil mixing bowls so this giant cedar box is actually our bathroom the uh, door handle is a piece of driftwood we found on the bank of the Columbia River in Hood River and inside We went with a standard shower pan and a normal RV style toilet, which actually does go down into a black water tank. So we have a black and a gray water tank like a normal RV, which means we can dump at any RV tank disposal station, which is super handy. Don't have to deal with any cassette style or composting toilets, which was a must for us. The tile in the back is using a silicon grout, which was a pain to put on, but it means that it will last a lot longer with the vibrations of driving. And it won't crack. A cute little mirror. Underneath the bed is our garage with all of our storage and extra things that we want to carry our outdoor activities, some hiking shoes, all of Bonza's stuff, as well as. <laughs> Bonzo's food is down here, and he's like, Is it lunchtime yet? No, buddy, it's only 8 o'clock. <laughs> But our water, our fresh water tank, as well as our plumbing system is under there as well, which we'll show you when we go around the bus. Also down here is the tank monitoring system so we can see how full our gray, black, and fresh tanks are, as well as our water heater control panel, which has an electric and a propane gas element for heating. So back here we have our cozy bedroom. It's a full-size bed. These are our closets. This is my side. We do like a bin system with shorts, pants. Oh, my arm's not very long. Uh, and other categories of clothes which are escaping my brain right now. And then we were gonna make the bed super long and had a last minute decision to add in sock and underwear drawers. So we both have a sock and underwear drawer which is really nice and handy. And we've got 
a bunch of windows, which gets really, really nice natural light in the mornings. Awesome to wake up to the forest or beach or desert or wherever we may be. So back to the exterior of the bus. I can show you a bit of the engine and what we've got going on outside. Mostly utilities, but they're all pretty cool. Okay, so this is the VT365 diesel engine. An Allison 1000 transmission down at the bottom, which you can't see. It's a beast. It's huge. I love it. It's super easy to work on if we need to, but so far we haven't had to do anything other than an oil change. This is a little foot step, which allows us to get up on top of the vehicle. And up here, we've got our solar panels, which in the redwoods don't do a whole lot. But we do have some canopy brakes, which will give us a little bit of light and a little bit of charge. In full charge, we can get about 20 amps, which is pretty incredible. But not in the winter. So these are two 200 watt new power solar panels in a cage that I welded for them specifically. Behind there is our max fan. This is our max fan output, as well as both of our skylights. This right here is the vent for our propane heater. And back there is our vent for our black and gray water tanks. This is a fuse panel that came with the bus. And this is our battery box. Just our starting battery box has to have three giant AGM batteries to uh, warm the glow plugs and get that giant engine turned over. What's really nice is all of these exterior boxes do lock, and so we don't have to worry about anything getting stolen if we leave it for a while. This is our 30 amp electric shore plug. If we are at a uh, RV spot, but we do have a cable that can plug into any 120 volt 15 amp outlet. This is our water panel. This is where we would fill up our tank. And then this is shore power or shore water. We go in there so we don't have to use our pump. This is our water heater that we had to install into the side. Very difficult job actually. But not a whole lot else to see there. It's direct spark ignition so we don't ever have to come out here to light it and it also has an electric element to heat the water if we're plugged in or if we don't have a whole lot of propane. We can use both at once to make it go really fast as well. In the back, we've got basically just our Instagram at follow us. Be our friend. That up there, again, is our vent for the black and gray water tanks, which does a great job at keeping the smell away from us. Underneath the bus, we have our gray and black water tanks. This is our black water. You can see the tank probe system that we've got set up. And that goes into a uh, standard valve that our tube can connect to, which goes straight to any RV dump station. This is our tube holder. And under here is our gray water tank. That's our gray water. It's a lot bigger. And the same valve. It's got the same valve and same tank probe system. A bunch of plumbing down here. A whole lot of fun stuff that job was. Whew. Not really, it sucked. With both of our black and gray water tanks under the bus, there wasn't a whole lot of extra room. And so this was the only other compartment down here, but it didn't quite fit both of the tanks. And we didn't want to just get rid of it and make a new one. So we just welded a extension to the bottom of the cabinet, which fits both tanks really well. We've got a two-way auto changeover pressure regulator with some pressure valve indicators, which are pretty accurate but they at least tell us which one is empty and which one is full at the moment. This one is gonna go soon, I think. Or not, I don't know. But again, yeah, it's really nice that we can just lock those things up and not have to worry about someone nagging up our pain. The only th other th box on this side is our gas tank. We put a fuel additive in every time we fill up. Um, the diesel mechanic that we bought the bus from said that we should do it if we want our bus to last a long time. And I believe him. 
We we'll put an exterior outlet here so we could power lights or even um, a little party situation if we want to. Speaking of party mode, one of the best parts about our bus is these. Oh yeah. <laughs> it can go in every single RGB color as well as just bright white when we need to uh, be out, you know, in front of our bus at night taking Bonzo out to go to the bathroom. But yeah, there's the white zip white. And at nighttime, it really does light everything up, including the inside of the bus, which is a great uh, way to just have a little party. It's fun. So we decided to get into bus lifestyle because we love to travel and um, adventure and hike and do all of that stuff. But um, it seems kind of unachievable in other ways, just like financially being tied to like rent or something, then also finding the time to like do long do long, long drives trips. or plane rides to explore. We were planning to get married in May of 2020, which for reasons that you may be familiar with, <laughs> did not happen. Um, and so our honeymoon was originally going to be a uh, like four month backpacking trip through Southeast Asia. And we had all of these flights and plans, um, which savings. were all canceled, as well as all of our savings that we had done for the past like two years. And we had all this time and, and extra money extra money and we're like what are we going to do with this where we come out at the end of the pandemic some are better than where we started yeah. and we started looking into vans which turned out to be very expensive and then we looked into buses and we found a bunch of great buses a bunch yeah. of awful buses um and this was the best bus that we saw and we are really really happy that we went with this one specifically yeah it's been amazing yeah, we looked at probably like 15 buses before we chose this one um, and a lot of the buses they were like totally fine on the surface level but once you like examined more of the engine um, it seemed that there was going to have a bunch of trouble and so we decided like if we're going to be dumping an additional you know like 15 or so grand into the build we want to have like a solid foundation and so we just like held out until we found one that we felt comfortable putting more money into. Um, so yeah, just a tip for if you're building to really like carefully choose your bus so you don't end up with a lemon in the end. Yeah. Um, and also just like really evaluate what your goal is in bus life. Like, you know, some people go with full size because they want to have like a more um, stationary sort of lifestyle. For us, we really wanted to be able to like travel all around, get anywhere that a van could go. So we went with this size model. Um, we like sacrificed space for the ability to go places. So. Yeah. Just kind of see what you want and pick the bus accordingly. Do a bunch of research. Definitely do your research. It's a lot of homework before you even get started, and then a lot of uh, work. A lot of work, like just literal homework. Get, yeah. <laughs> work on your home. Yeah. Which is great because it is a ton of work, many many hours. But by the end of it, you do have a home which yeah. you can take anywhere. There's like and no feeling like it. It's pretty unbelievable. It's, um, yeah, heartwarming. Yeah. And every day we wake up in our cozy little house with our cozy little fire and a cozy little cup of coffee. We just like can't believe that we managed to get it done and are living in it. It's, it's pretty incredible. But we definitely had hard days. Like there were, there were for sure times during the build where we were like, yeah. I don't think we're going to finish this. Like, what have we done? So I guess, yeah, if you're in the middle of a build or you're thinking about starting a build, like if you have days like that, don't be discouraged. I think we all go through it, but mm -hmm. it does get better and you can do it. Push through. Yeah. We looked a lot on Pinterest when uh, thinking about the design of things. Um, and other schooly Instagrams. Like yeah. we, any bus that we saw the cedar ceiling in just, loved it. Like, yeah. It always looks so good. Um, and so we knew that was going to be um, an element that we wanted. And The I green couches um, have been a dream of mine literally since I was like eight. <laughs> I've always wanted a velvet green couch and so when I got to build my own couch I was like that was the time. It's now or never. <laughs> the technical design of a lot of the uh, pull-out mechanisms we did find from other schoolies, mm -hmm. um, but our couch we did design ourselves as far as the drawer pull-out uh, mechanism, yeah. which 
I am super glad that we took the time to figure that out because it has been so nice to be easily accessible, like such a huge amount of storage. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then... we really like, we just wanted it to feel super natural in here. Like I didn't want to feel when we're in the outdoors, like we're apart from the outdoors. So we really wanted just like natural colors and like a woodsy feel, which um, everywhere we've gone, the bus seems to just fit right in perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, except for the outside. <laughs> the outside isn't typically something you see in nature, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the perfect combination of both of our aesthetics. Like, we have very similar aesthetic. Owen's favorite color is black. Can't and I really now. like green. <laughs> <laughs> we both love insects and we both love plants. And so yeah, everything just kind of like fell together really nicely. It does. It was super easy to get insurance. We yeah. called up State Farm and we got uh, Colin or something like that. Sorry. Don't give name. his name. Colin. What if he gets in trouble? Colin at State Farm. Okay, that's there's true. There's more than one Colin <laughs> and I got it wrong for sure. No, there's only one Jake. Oh yeah, that's true. We <laughs> called up State Farm and got Jake himself. And he just... Oh, hi Bato. <laughs> and uh, they just... We told him really upfront like what we were doing, and um, didn't like try to hide anything or yeah. say like we had made this schoolie. We were very upfront, and they were very uh, understanding. And we just had to send some pictures of the build, and they uh, hooked us up with full insurance as well as renters insurance for all of our belongings inside. Um, and it's forty dollars a month. Yeah, it's really affordable. We feel like. There just may have been some, some mistakes made in the computer, so if you're yeah, we don't need to put the we don't need to put uh, us on blast. Yeah. <laughs> well, but what if someone calls State Farm and they're like, "We heard this." That's true. So don't don't call State Farm and say no, that you, you can call, heard. Call State Farm, just don't. Yeah, just don't mention us. Don't throw us <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Nice. Sustainability is super important to us. Um, we have. For the past like five years, been like living uh, low waste, um, eating like a vegan diet, um, doing everything that's within like our accessibility to um, contribute to living sustainably, um, and that was definitely incorporated into our build. Like we had to make sure that we had room for a food scrap compost, that we had room to buy in bulk with all of our jars. Yeah, our pantry. Yeah. Um, there is obviously the aspect of having a diesel engine, which, um, you know, isn't sustainable, but we do run off of solar. We've definitely had our challenges since living on the road. Um, I think California is one of the hardest states to live in. Which, so expensive for it, gas. Yeah, gas is ridiculous, and um, they're very tight about where you can and cannot park in a lot of cities. As soon as you leave California, it is a lot cheaper and a lot um, easier to park wherever you want. Um, but we use iOverlander, which is a great app, um, to find a lot of our spots. And then I work remotely and we can basically just stop anywhere that we have good service um, during the week and uh, do any of the work that I need to do. I think, well, we were living in a very small, a smaller house than this before um, bus life. We were living in a 10 foot by 10 foot cube with a little loft bed that had um, an outdoor shower and bathroom and an, an outdoor kitchen and it was someplace where it does snow so it the winters cheap. yeah it was rough you know we didn't we had a mini fridge we didn't have like a freezer or anything we like had to go outside to pee all the time which Wasn't we were super to lucky to even <laughs> have a home but there were challenges that this bus does not present to us um, yeah so it's definitely an upgrade moving yeah. into the bus and like, we'd already been living tiny and so we didn't have like that huge transition of yeah. um, getting rid of a bunch of our stuff. We had been doing it for probably two years. The prior. first week, like every time I'd go to the bathroom and be like, I can't wait to pee inside. <laughs> like it was just like a life of luxury. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was, it's not, it's not been really much of like a living challenge. I think it's just more been of like finding our footing of like, um, what we can afford basically because we've been traveling a lot in the first like couple months because we've been excited and like hopping from places but income wise it's definitely not sustainable for us so we kind of just are working and finding like our everyday lifestyle and bus lifestyle mm -hmm. because 
and where things kind of settle in. Yeah. And we uh, find our footing. And it's coming. It's it getting is coming. There. We're figuring it out. Yeah. And we're really, we're really excited because it's, um, it's been fun to travel around, but it's also, you know, fun to just take a step back and live for a little while. Um, yeah. I think we're going to start now. picking cities and stay for an entire month and do the whole rent thing at a, an RV park. Yep. Oh yeah. And then special trips. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming to our tour. Yeah, we enjoyed having you here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come again soon. Yeah. We are on TikTok and Instagram and our YouTube channel, um, all under Indigo Somewhere. So check us out there if you do want to come back and hang out with us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're fun hosts. Yep. Yeah. We sleep. It sleeps four. So bring your pillow. Yeah. <laughs>